All right, so I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Christopher Wong. You guys can just call me Chris. Um, a little bit about myself. I'm a senior right now, set to graduate in May. I also lead the Decimal State. So that's on Tuesdays at five. So we go over all sorts of different like development tools. So GitHub is one of the things we talk about. Um, I think next Tuesday we're also going to talk about Docker. So if you're interested in that, you can stop by. All right, so. Um, how familiar are you guys with Git? Uh, raise your hand if you've heard of Git, but never really used it before. Okay, so some new people. Raise your hand if you've used it before, but you're not really super comfortable with it. Okay. Uh, raise your hand if you use Git and you're pretty comfortable with it. All right, so most of the beginners, that's okay. That's who I'm targeting with this. Um, Basically, we're going to talk about what Git is and why you might want to use it. Um, next, we're going to talk about the Git basics and how it really works. So I'm going to focus on some of the stuff it's actually doing under the hood. So you know what happens when you actually commit, uh, what happens when you make a branch, those things like that. So when you're typing in these commands, you actually know what's happening. And then next, uh, for our last thing, we're actually going to do a small little project and get it uploaded to GitHub, play around with some pull requests and things like that. All right, so first up, what is Git? So Git is what we call a source control manager, uh, SEM or DTS, so version control system. Um, it basically means the same thing, but the gist of it is that it will control your source code for you and keep a history of all the changes you've made to your project. Um, a little trivia, I guess, it was made by Linus Torvalds for the, for the Linux kernel project back in 2005. Um, and it was made specifically to be fast, distributed, to support parallel development. So I have a few things up here. Uh, distributed, so each developer has their own like, repository they can develop on, and a shared repository that they can publish or go to and pull other developers to work from. Um, and it's also made this for parallel development, so you can have separate branches of development. So you might have a master branch, that is production ready. You might have a develop branch, which is code that you are currently developing, and then topic branches, maybe for features you're working on, things like that. But we'll go over some of that in a little bit. All right, so it sounds a little weird. You keep a complete history of all your source code. So why do you want to do that? Um, basically, it lets you do things like find changes that introduce bugs. So you can find a commit that introduce some kind of bug. Um, you can easily recover from mistakes or deleted files. So let's say you're working on a homework project or something, and you're trying to fix a bug, and you just mess up your entire project. Well, if you have a complete history of all your code, you can just revert back to something that works. Um, even if you just delete a file, you can usually just recover from that. And the big thing about Git and why it's used so much, why GitHub is a huge thing, is that it makes collaboration really easy. So GitHub is a place that hosts your Git repositories, so you can share your code and also collaborate with other, other developers. So we all know Git and little Octopath. All right, so actually using Git, um, there's a command line tool. There's also uh, migration built into most IDEs, but if those aren't really your thing, you also have some graphical clients like Git Kraken. So Git Kraken is like a visual GUI. It makes it really easy to see what's going on. Um, you know, when you're actually pulling code, pushing code, things like that. So if you're not comfortable with the command line, which is probably what we're going to end up using today because that's what we have available, uh, definitely check out Git Kraken. I think if you go to GitHub, you can actually get the GitHub student pack or something, and you can get access to Git Kraken for free. So definitely check it out. All right, so now we're going to move on to some of the Git like basics. So this is going to be talking about how Git kind of works under the hood, as well as all of these small components. And they all kind of build on top of each other. So if I'm going too fast or something doesn't make sense, definitely let me know. Um, it's probably not you guys, it's probably me going over things a little too fast. So don't be afraid to speak up. So there's four main parts I want to talk about today, which are commits, branching, merging, and then pushing and pulling. 
So Git is really powerful. There's a lot of cool things you can do with it. But if you know these four things, you should be able to use Git for your projects without too many issues. All right. So first thing is a commit. So this is how you add code to your repository. So basically, anytime you make a change to your code that you're happy with, maybe you add a function, maybe you fix a bug or something like that, you make a commit. And what that commit is, is just a snapshot of your project at that point in time. So exactly what your project looks like and all the files currently in your project. Um, and then keep track of the previous commit. So it's kind of like a linked list, if you guys are familiar with those. Uh, basically, every time you make a commit, um, you're adding like a new node and it's pointing to the previous node. If you guys aren't familiar with that, it's okay. We're going to go over that. Um, the commits also have some additional things in, uh, some things into in addition to your code. So it'll have like the commit message, or like what you actually did, an author and a time. So some interesting little thing. Um, this little graphic isn't really super important. I just included it because it's interesting. Um, if you guys have heard of Bitcoin, it uses a data structure called like the Merkle tree. This is kind of similar to that. Um, just an interesting little tidbit. If that doesn't make sense, it's fine. All right. So the way a commit works is, like I said, every time you make a change to your code, um, you can make a commit. So that's like a snapshot of your code. So as you go on, you might be developing, you know, writing your code, and something may not work. So you work on it a little bit, and you get to a point where it does work, and you're happy with it. So once you're happy with it, you're ready to commit your code to the repository. That's what a commit is. So your commits, like I said, will have a bunch of information like who actually wrote it, um, what time and everything. And then it'll have like a snapshot of your project at that point in time. So this is exactly what your project looked like at that point in time. And each commit will point to its parent. So you can see where you came from. So that means that every commit can see a full history of the project at that point in time. You know, you can just go to the previous commit and you see what it looked like before. Um, over here is what, if you type in git log, this is like a log that everything you've done. So this might be a little hard to read, but these are all separate commits, and you can see the different things that have been done, so like initial commits, added skeletons, implement the various functions, and things like that. Those are all in a separate commit. So at any point in time, I can go back um, and see what my code base looked at that point in time. Okay, so Branching. This is Git's killer feature, and this is what makes Git so easy to use, or um, I guess easy to collaborate with. They can be a little complicated, but if you keep in mind that commits can point to their parents and things like that, um, it gets a little easier when you buy like this. So branches in Git are made to be really lightweight and really fast. So really, you can do all of your development in a separate branch. Um, when you use branches, you can do parallel development. You can work on a bunch of different features at the same time, or have a bunch of different developers working on the same code base at the same time without interfering with each other. So that's what makes collaboration really easy. So over here, these are different commits. So these are sort of snapshots of your code at this point in time. And these are your branches. So this is some issue number 53, the hotfix, the master branch. And branches will basically just point to these commits. So you can see that the master branch to this commit, and someone's made a new branch and made a different commit. <coughs> someone made a hot, has made a hot fix branch. That's a different commit. And you can see where these commits came from. They both came from this commit up here, but these two commits are separate from each other. So the person working on issue 53 and the person working on hot fix aren't interfering with each other at all. So I think this is I just talked about. So yeah. Branches basically just point at specific commits. Um, that's really all they are. So that's why they're so lightweight. Um, yeah, as you commit code, your branch pointer will move with you. So originally, if you go back over here, issue 53 was originally pointing to C2. That is not a fix their issue in this commit. So it adds this new commit and then moves the branch pointer to it. So now you can see uh, where issue 53 came from. Here's the fix, here's what it was originally, and here's the entire history back there. So is that all kind of making sense? Yeah. Anything confusing? All right. So 
a little bit more. You also have this special pointer called head. And this is basically what branch you currently have checked out. So when I say checked out, I mean what code you're actually looking at. So right now, head is pointing to master. And master is pointing to this commit. So whatever the code looks like at this point in time is what you've got checked out. That's what you're working on right now. Um, as you move head to different commits and different branches, that might automatically check out new code for you. So let's say you move your head over here. Git will go ahead and check out all your files and exactly as they look like at this point in time. So this is a simple little scenario that is pretty common you might come across. <laughs> right now you have this history. These are all commits. And then we have two branches, the branch called master and the branch called testing. And right now we've got master checked out. So exactly as the code looks like at this point in time, you can see. And what we can do is check out the testing branch. So you notice these are pointing the same commit, so nothing's actually going to change for you because the code looks like the exact same, same thing. Um, this is where it gets kind of cool though. So right now on the testing branch, let's say I go ahead and test out a bug fix, right, and fixing a bug or something, and I make another commit. So you notice that this is our old commit. We made a new commit over here, and the testing branch moved with it. We've got our head checked out, our head pointed testing. So exactly as our code looks like at that point in time, that's what we got checked out. Now, let's say that you get an urgent call or something, and there's a bug that you need to fix right away. So you go ahead and check out master again. So what happens is head moves to the master branch. And so your code, as it looks like at this point in time, gets checked out. So all the changes you made here um, get put away and get undone when you go to this commit. Now, because you've actually committed it, all the changes you made over here are safe. And you can go back to them at any point in time. But this is good because we need to fix this bug. This is still working hard. We don't want to push this up to our you know, server or something. So we want to go back to here and fix this bug. We go back there, fix the bug, and we'll make another commit. And that's what this is. So now after we're done with that, we could just go ahead and check out our testing branch again and pick out exactly where we left off. Um, you'll notice though, this is kind of interesting. We have two different histories. And they're both pointing to this old commit. But the changes in here, in this bottom commit, aren't going to be reflected in the uh, changes above and vice versa. So after we fix our testing branch, we get everything fixed. Um, obviously, we want to get that back up to our master branch. But also, we want to include the changes that we made that Hotfix that we made up there. So how do you guys think we might do that? <coughs> Yeah, well, that's going to be the next thing, and it's merging. So this is pretty self-explanatory, right? If we have kind of two separate branches of development, and we want to put them together, well, we just merge them together. So this makes a new commit, and what Git does is it figures out what changes you made here, and what changes you made here, and just basically puts them all together. So this is why Git is really good for collaboration. Um, Basically, you can make a branch, work on it, and someone could be working on another branch at the same time. And when you're done, you can just merge all your work together. And Git, for the most part, will handle merging pretty well. Um, you guys have probably heard of it before, but you might run into merge conflicts. That's when Git can't figure out exactly what you want to do. Um, and those can definitely be a little scary. But Git will basically tell you, here's what changed in this branch. Here's what changed in this branch. What do you want to do? And so you can figure out what you want the code to look like at that point in time. You can integrate both those changes into yourself. And then it'll make that new commit for you that has all that input or all that integrated together. So, so far everything we've actually done has been local. So just on our own computer. So no one else can actually see those changes that we've made. Um, that's because Git is what we call distributed. So you have your own complete copy of the code base, your own repository. And everything you make on that is just local to your own repository. So that means that you don't even have to be online 
to do anything with Git. Um, you can be on an airplane, you can be writing code and making commits and everything. Um, and when you land or something, what you can do is publish them. And that's what pushing and pulling will let you do. So basically the way this works is each developer will have their own repository that they're working on and then some shared repository that they can all push to and all pull from. And that's how they can integrate their work together. Um, so pulling will basically take everything that's your repository and merge it with our own work. Pushing will basically take our work and push it up to the shared repository that way other developers can use it. And this is exactly what GitHub does for you. It basically acts as a place for the shared repositories and it also adds a lot of really cool features that'll help you you know, collaborate with other developers. Um, so like I said, GitHub is the place that hosts these repositories, but it also adds a lot of new features um, on top of Git. So the biggest one is pull requests. So this is how you can collaborate with other people. So let's say you made a change to the code base, right? You push that up to your own repository, um, and you want someone else to integrate those changes into their repository. What you can do is issue a pull request, and that's basically saying, hey, I'd like you to go pull from my repository and integrate these changes. And those can have like comments on them. People can discuss them. Say like, I like this. I don't uh, like this. Um, one of the big things is code reviews. So for larger projects, that's important. You know, you might have other developers looking over your work and saying, okay, this is all right, but I think you can do this better. And GitHub will basically track all that for you and help you do code reviews. Um, it's also that stuff for bug reports. For issues. Um, so if someone notices an issue, they can post an issue on your GitHub repository and you can go ahead and fix that. Um, and then also permissions. Obviously, if you have a GitHub repository, you don't want people just random people pushing to it. Um, and in some cases, you probably don't want people pulling from it. Like if you're working on proprietary code or something, obviously you don't want that to be public. Um, so GitHub has a lot of features to that. So that was kind of a lightning fast overview of how Git works under the hood. Um, hopefully that was a little helpful. Is anything confusing about that? Anything you guys wanted to go over? Okay. So if you guys are anything like me, this might be helpful, but what's really good is actually getting hands on and actually doing this kind of stuff. So that's why this next part is basically all going to be about actually getting hands on doing stuff. So um, hopefully everybody has a GitHub account, right? They're logged in. So we're actually going to make a small project, get it published to GitHub, and then get you guys to play around with pull requests and things like that. So let me go ahead and get logged in. All right, so when you first log in, you're probably going to see something like this. So this is just kind of an overview of your Git account, a lot of your different repositories and stuff. So <laughs> over there, you can see your different repositories, um, some activity on them and stuff like that. But right now, we're going to create a new repository. So that's just going to be this button over here. New repository. Okay. So yeah, if you guys are brand new, you may not have this overview. Um, just go over here. This plus sign up in the corner, and then new repository. And this will help you set up um, your repository with some stuff in it. So then, does everybody see a page similar to this? All right. So repository name, basically just what you want to call the project. So I'm going to call this one Tiger Talks Demo. Description, um, be anything you want. And then this one over here, public or private. So public, uh, basically anyone can see your repository and anyone can pull from it. So if your code changes and stuff, that's great for open source projects. 
not so much if you're working on a proprietary thing or if you're um, like working in your homework or something, if you don't want to copy off the internet. So in that case, you use a private repository. So in this one, only you can see it, and only the people that you've approved can actually see what's in it. So maybe for a school project, that might be better. You can add these as members, um, and they can use your uh, repository for that. So over here, initialize this project with a readme. Um, I'm not going to do this right now, but basically this will provide some information about what your project is. So you can add whatever you want to that. Then over here, so there's something called a dot git ignore. So this will basically say what you don't want in your repository. So software repositories are typically for code only. You don't want your compiled code and stuff like that in there. So there are some things you might want to exclude from your repository. So that's really what these git ignores are. So in this case, um, we're working on a small Python project. So we're going to add a git ignore for Python. And then license. This is like if you want to do some kind of open source license um, or any other kind of license, I guess. I'm just going to leave it blank for now since this is going to be a small project, a uh, small temporary project. So after that, we can just create the repository. Right. So now this is our repository. Um, we can see all the files in it. Right now we just have one that's not getting more. If you click on it, you can see the contents of it. So. This basically just has a bunch of stuff you want to ignore in it. Up here at the top, you can see the things I talked about. So issues, people have bug reports or something, they can post them there. Also pull requests, we're going to be doing one of these. I'll show you how to do that. And then a few other things. So over here, you can check out different branches. Right now we just have one, the master branch. So you haven't made any other kind of branch. And then you can also, from here, create new files, upload files, and stuff like that. We're going to be doing that on our computers, so we need to worry about that. The biggest thing over here is this clone or download. So this is how we're going to basically get a copy of our repository onto our local computer so we can actually use it. So what we're going to be interested in is this link. And for right now, you guys are going to be wanting to use HTTPS. So what we're going to do is copy this. And on you guys' computers, hopefully we have git bash installed. So if you just hit the Windows key and type in git, it should be this git cmd. Uh, just hit the Windows key and then type in git. And hopefully, um, yeah, I can get. Awesome. Okay, so then we'll get this command line prompts. Um, have you guys have used a command line before? Yeah. How many of you guys have not used it before? All right, a few people. I'll try to go slow. Um, like I said, if you're not a fan of the command line, there are DUIs available. Get Kraken is one I recommend. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any problem on these computers, so we're going to use the command line. Um, the nice thing about the command line, though, is you get all the features of Git, which you may not get on the IDE. So it's still good to know this. Um, so I'm going to stick this here. All right, so if you guys have copied, and copied that URL, what we can do is git clone and go ahead and paste your uh, URL there. And then we can just hit enter. So what that'll do is download a repository and get everything set up for us. So has everybody gotten to this point? All 
All right, so that should have downloaded that for us and created a new, repo or a new folder called Tiger Talks Demo. So what we can do is CD or change directory in there. So CD space and then whatever you called your repository. So what you can do is type in the first few letters and hit tab. It'll tab complete for you. And after that, the prompt should change a little bit so you can see uh, you're in this repository now. Is everybody at this point? We good? Okay. All right, so I'm gonna introduce you guys to your first git command. Um, this is one that you'll probably use all the time, but it's just gonna be git status. So git base status. This will basically tell you what's going on in the repository. Um, so if you wanna see what's going on at any point in time, you can just type this in. So right now we can see we're on the master branch. Um, we're up to date with Origin Masters. So right now we're up to date with GitHub. And we have nothing to commit and our working tree is clean. That basically means that we haven't changed anything yet. It's how your talks demo. You can uh, continue. Yeah. All right, so at this point in time, we're going to make a small little project. So, how many of you guys are familiar with Python? How many of you guys have never used Python before? All right, yeah, this will be neat. Um, this will be a small little project. I'll go slow so you guys can follow along. Um, we can follow along really quick um, and do this. So first thing we're going to do is, I think, oh yeah. Uh, let me see. Wow. That's so much better. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Can everybody see that or do you want me to make it bigger? If I can make it bigger. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. Is everybody at this point then? I know that might have been hard to follow along if it's that small. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is Python M. Um, VN, VN. So this is how you might set up like a small Python project. You'll create a virtual environment, and this will let you install like packages and stuff like that. Um, you know, libraries you might want to use. So type that in. Hopefully, that's doing stuff. Oh. All right, so it'll create a new directory for us called VN. Um, <coughs> yeah, let me. Okay. Yeah, so
All right, so I might have told you to do git cmd. Go ahead and do git bash. Um, it should be on that same list. So git, yeah, or you want git bash instead. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, go ahead and do um yeah, go ahead and do get cash instead. So and then just type in get and do get cash. Okay, so then after that, we're going to activate this with this command. This is how we get in this virtual environment we can start installing stuff. So, source cm slash scripts slash activate. Okay, everyone doing all right? Where they've got the uh, virtual environment in there. Doing good? Okay. So after that, we're going to activate it. So that's going to be the source CM scripts activate. Hopefully, you got it. We're good there. Thumbs up if you're good. Great. Okay. So after that, we're going to install Flask. So Flask is something that lets you develop like little web applications. So we're going to do that with Python m pip install flask. Uh, Python, so py is a <laughs> All right, so after you guys run this command, you should download a bunch of stuff for you. Right. So is everybody at this point? Um,
Yeah. You good? All right. So that'll install everything we need for Flash. Now we can actually get started. Yeah, sorry. Um, a little bit of work to get that set up. All right. So now we're actually going to write a small little application. So we can use is a little program called Nano and you get app.py. So this is going to create a file for us called app.py and we're going to be able to edit this. All right. Now we can actually type in some code. Um, All right, so this is going to be like a little hello world app with class. So it's going to be from class, import class, uh, even mind the case sensitive. The next line is app equals class. And those are two underscores name and another yeah. two underscores. And then it's going to be at app.route def hello world and then return hello world. Yeah. Yeah. So this is um, yeah. So this is something that Flash uses. So it's saying that if your web server gets your request for Flash, so like just a default thing, it'll run this function, the whole world, and just return the whole world. All right. So has everybody gotten this copy done? Yeah. Give me a thumbs up if you guys are there. Yeah. All right. So then after that, you can hit Control X, exit, hit yes to save, and then enter. Not going to save that. All right. So has everyone got that saved? Okay. Yeah, hit control X, Y for yes, and then hit enter, and that should save it. All right, you good there? You got that saved? Yeah. Everyone there? Okay. So now if we do ls, again, list the files, we should be able to see that at the i. And let's actually go ahead and try to run that. So I think if we do flask run, there we go. So if you typed in everything right, um, you should get something like this. If you type in flask run, now, this is running a web server um, that's listening on port 5000. <laughs> Everybody got something looking like this yet? 
So, so what we can do is open up a web browser so you guys can use like Chrome or something. And this web address here, what we can do is um, copy that. And then on your web browser, paste that and go. And you've got a little, a little oil thing. <laughs> All right. Has everyone gotten up to show up? So hopefully everyone's got this little hello world thing now, right? And that works. No. So hopefully we all have that. Um, and that works. Okay. So we're happy with that. So now we're actually ready to uh, commit this code. So what you're going to do is control C and that'll basically close your web server. So then after that, what we can do is type in uh, git status, and that command I showed you guys first. And you'll notice it tells you some new stuff. So we have untracked files. So basically, git will only track files that you've explicitly told it that it's in the repository. So what we need to do is add that. So I'm going to tell you exactly what to do. So it's going to be git add app.py. And then if we type in git status again after that, you get add app.py. Type in git status again. <laughs> we'll notice that we have um, a different thing now. Now it says changes to be committed. So basically it says that we've added a new file called app.py. And this is what's going to be in our commit. Then after that, we can type in <laughs> git commit. M, then in quotes, we can put our commit message. In this case, we can say implemented hello world. <laughs> After we enter that, Uh, da, da, da. It might complain because we haven't told Git who we are. So like I said, it attaches the author and everything. We haven't told it who we are, so it doesn't know who the author is. So we can ignore that for right now. Um, but I believe it tells you, yeah, I think it tells you how to do that. All right. So is everyone at this point? Give me a thumbs up if you're there. 
Uh, raise your hand if you're not. No, no, no. So it just tells you how many times, how many uh, different changes you've made. So in this case, if you didn't have a file, everything changed, obviously. So now that we have that, we can type in git status yet again. That's going to be a command you guys use a lot. Yeah. And now that we can see, um, we're actually ahead of origin master by one commit. So what that means is we have changes on our local repository that aren't on our GitHub account. So if you go to GitHub right now, you'll notice that these changes we made don't show up at all because we haven't actually pushed them up yet. And so the way you do that is just git push. So can we do that? I'll ask you to uh, log in. And we should push those out for you. Then if we do get status yet again. You can see that we're up to date again with Origin Master. So now if we go to our GitHub account, we refresh this. You'll notice that our app.py is on there, and we can see our commit message implemented the low world. That's how we get that on there. Right. So We've only got a few minutes left, so I just want to show you guys these before we go. Um, what I'm going to do is, let's say I want to add a new feature. What I can do is add a new branch. So to do that, if I type in git branch right now, I can see what branches I have. And I just have a master branch. So I'm going to create a new one called, um, yeah, say hi. If I do git branch again, you can see that I have two branches, master and the C branch called say hi. So what I'm going to do is check out this say hi. So it's told me I've switched branches. I check again. I'm on this new branch. And so now I can go ahead and make changes. And those are going to be on a separate branch. So I'm just going to do this real quick. Um, So made a little change there. I want to test it out. So yeah, this I'm just going to run through really quick since we only have a few minutes. Um, yeah, sorry. Like I said, I'm just going to run through this real quick so you don't have to follow along. You can just watch. All right. So now I've added a new thing where I type in something like this. It'll sell a uh, hello trace. It's not a little hard to see. So I added the new feature. What I can do is go ahead and push that to GitHub. So you notice if I do something like git push, it'll complain. It doesn't know where to push it to. 
and it'll tell me exactly how I can push it up. So I can just do git push origin, say hi. So what that does is it'll push my code up and create a new branch on GitHub. So if I go there, refresh this, you'll notice I have a new branch. And this branch will have the changes I made. Or, oops, sorry. There we go. There we go. So now it has the changes I made. All right. So if I want to get these in the master branch, what I can do is issue a pull request. So that's going to be over here. You can issue a new pull request. And basically, what I want to pull. So this can be from your own repository, or if you're working on the same repository with the group, it can just show up as a separate branch. In this case, I can do this, say hi, and create the pull request. And now it has this pull request, and if I like it, I can go ahead and merge it. And if we go back to my code, you'll notice the master branch has the new uh, code that you pushed up there. All right, so we're pretty much out of time. Um, you guys want to check out the machine learning one. I think it's upstairs. But I'll stick around if you guys have any questions or if you guys want to go over this a little bit more. But uh, yeah, thanks for having me here. Thank you. Um, so we will...